Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Um, I want to start out this morning by just sharing a little bit of, of, of my hopes for um, what the sermon time is all about for you all each Sunday that I preach. Um, and it actually is tied to some of the baptismal promises that we've been learning about here in Lent. Um, our second promise is to hear the word, the Lord's word, hear the word of God, right? And so hopefully each Sunday when you come, you hear some of God's word through the scripture and then also through how we talk about it, right? Um, but, I, you know, and I know I sit out there too sometimes and sometimes I'm like, oh, it's a really great sermon. Don't ask me what they said, right? <laughs> I know we're all there sometimes. However, um, the hope is that you will hear the word of God and then promise number two, proclaim the word of God to others through thought, thought and deed or word and deed. So hopefully during this Lenten season, as we've kind of gone over the same thing quite a bit, we've been talking a lot about the same things, hopefully that's going to be something that will then stick with you so that you not only hear it with your ears, but you internalize it and then can proclaim it. So we're going to go through today a little bit of a journey um, on what we've talked about through the season of Lent because, again, unbelievably, Easter is only two weeks away. And next weekend is Palm Sunday. I have no idea where the time goes sometimes. Uh, I thought when my children moved out, time would slow down, but actually it just got faster. No one tells you that. <laughs> so today, let's talk about um, a little bit about Lent as we get ready to prepare for our Easter celebration. There are three things that we've kind of covered over the last several weeks. Um, baptism, especially God's part. Um, the other covenants that God made with God's people in the Old Testament. And then back to baptism and what our part of the covenant is that we have with God. And so let's start talking about baptism. Um, and this is an appropriate conversation for Lent. I know sometimes it, it's felt this year a little bit... Um, more upbeat than other Lenten seasons. We're often used to Lent being somber and reflective, but it's also a very appropriate time to talk about baptism because Good Friday and Easter are the reason we have baptism. It's not just through Easter, but also through Good Friday. Jesus had to die in order to rise so that our baptism could be made possible. We celebrate that we're baptized into Christ's death and then into Christ's resurrection. And his death is a very painful earthly death, sometimes just like ours. We also die. We are dust, and to dust we shall return, as we talked about the very first day of Lent on Ash Wednesday. But then we're also baptized into Christ's resurrection. So we live because God wants us to live. God renews our covenant by giving us the grace to continue living because of Christ. And at the same time we're baptized, we're inheritors of God's kingdom. We are baptized into the family of God as a child of God. We're fully reconciled with God and with each other. Not just forgiven and washed clean, but we're brought back into right relationship with each other, a reconciled, our big church word, reconciled relationship. We should talk a little bit about in the children's sermon today when, when, we, when we hurt someone or we, or we turn away from something or we break a commandment or whatever, um, we don't just say we're sorry, but we work to make it right again. And of course, it's never going to be exactly the same, but we can work to make it right again. Um, one of the other big church words we use to talk about what happens um, with this is atonement that we atone for our sins. And that was a lot about what the Old Testament covenant was about. You break the law, you atone for your sins. But when we think about what Jesus does for us, I like to look at the word a different way. Atonement, when broken apart, can read at one meant. And so what happens in our baptism and this covenant that God makes with us, or the new covenant that we have with God, we are brought together and made one again. We are reconciled with God and with each other. 
And this new covenant is kind of what Jeremiah talks about in our Old Testament reading today. I think it's a very important reading, um, and so I want to go over it again. So please listen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is part of the new covenant that God makes with us that we celebrate in baptism. But speaking of covenants, that takes us to the second thing that we've talked a lot about during Lent. All of our Old Testament readings have had to do with covenants that God has made with God's people. So when we go back all the way to the beginning, the first covenant we talked about was the flood. After the flood, Noah promises never to flood the earth. God promises Noah that he will never flood the earth again. And then when we move further into Genesis, God covenants with Abram, who then changes his name to Abraham, that um, he will have many descendants, many descendants, and a place for their people to live. And then through a lot of things, the people lose their place, but then uh, the Lord returns them, takes them out of Egypt and the slavery that they've been into in Exodus, takes them into the wilderness and frees them from that slavery and gives them the Ten Commandments. And those Ten Commandments were a way to live with each other and to live in relationship with God as a whole new creation. Um, So we've gone from a covenant about never flooding the earth again to having many descendants, and now, adding on top of that, we have these Ten Commandments for how to live together. And of course, we're not so great at always abiding by the commandments or always following God, right? We kind of sometimes get a little mixed up. And so we have story after story, and one of those stories is how the Israelite people began to complain again and talk about how they just wanted to go back to Egypt and be in slavery and forgetting what God had done for them. And so the snakes start biting them. But once again, God comes and makes a covenant and says, put up this snake, this symbol of a snake, and when, it, uh, when the snakes bite you, you look at it and you will live. So once again, God preserved the people, gives them life even when they make mistakes. And that all brings us to this new covenant that's shared in the, by the prophet uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah talks about this um, towards the end, toward, closer on towards um, the time of Jesus. It's almost like a transitional time. This covenant serves as the transition between all the Old Testament covenants into what's going to be the new covenant um, through the Gospels. It's not that we throw out all the other covenants God's made with us. Clearly, we need to abide by the Ten Commandments and live that way. But God's covenant is always about relationship. And so when it was getting hard to figure out how to be in relationship and how to make that right, God makes a new covenant with us. And so it continues all the other covenants before, but it also then includes a measure of grace because we are so prone to forgetting about our covenant, our part in the covenant. God's covenant with us never wavers. God always keeps God's covenant with us. It's us that have trouble. But this brings us to our part. So our part of the new covenant, not just all the old stuff that we've learned way back at the beginning of the Bible, but the new covenant that we receive in baptism, we have a part in that. We have these five promises that we say. God is always faithful to us, and God's commitment and faithfulness and fulfillment of promises is not dependent on our fulfilling our part of the bargain. However, we have this opportunity to live a life of faith. We often waver, and, and so this is a great way that, Jesus, that God has made possible for us to receive grace not by abolishing the law, but by Jesus fulfilling the law for us so that we can have this grace. So let's talk about then our part of the covenant that we work to do, but 
not always perfect at it, okay? So we've listed these five promises, or well, so far we've listed four. I'm going to give you the fifth baptismal promise today, which is to live among God's uh, faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I didn't write it down today. I'm really proud of myself. So, uh, but you guys can do this too. So let's practice together once again, because my hope is that these promises then become something that we lean on and we think about in our daily lives as we live out our life of faith. So say them with me as best you can. They are in the hymnal. I believe it's page 233-ish. So if you want to look, you can cheat a little bit, but I also know that it works better to learn them if you don't look. So let's try to do this together. Say them with me. And just, you know, blah, 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 if you don't really know, just try. Just do the words that you know, okay? So we are to live among God's faithful people, hear the word of God, and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So take a look at those. Uh, take a hymnal if you need to and bring it back next week and, and get those covered. But those are the things that we also, that's our part of the covenant in baptism that we have. And so this whole Lenten season, we've had this opportunity to go back and look at kind of the entirety of scripture all the way up to Jesus' time. We've taken a look at the covenants that God has made with us throughout the Old Testament, and we've seen some of the stories about how that got played out. And then it brings us to Jeremiah that becomes this transition from what happened in the Old Testament, now looking forward to the new, as Jeremiah says, God is going to make this new covenant. And then in our gospel today, the men come to, the disciples come to Jesus and say, these people want to see you, and Jesus says, not now, my time is come. It is now time. And so this is the transition in John's gospel from the old covenant to the new covenant. Jesus knows that his ministry is now moving into that fulfillment phase. And that's where we are headed also with our celebration of what God does for us. So we've had an opportunity to look at these old covenants and the history and the troubles and the warnings but we're also getting the opportunity to look at the promise and the faithfulness of our loving God, our life-giving God. And with Jeremiah, we now look ahead to the new covenant established in the Gospels, which is the good news of Jesus Christ. So in the next few weeks, during Palm Sunday and Holy Week, I hope that you will listen for the ways that this Old Testament story brings to life this covenant, this new covenant that God is making with God's people and has made throughout all time. Hopefully this Lenten journey has been a time of connecting the dots through all of Scripture, and perhaps with a clearer picture of what God has done for us. Our hearts will be made new, and our spirits will be renewed. And as Jeremiah prophesies, we will know God in our hearts, so that we can see how these baptismal promises that we're learning continually renew us to seek God and serve others every day, everywhere, and with everyone.